Hello, everyone, and welcome to episode 88 of Podcast vs. Enemies, a Destiny Massive Breakdown show. Season 23 is right around the corner, and we have some sandbox changes to discuss. My name is Impetus, and today I am joined by my co-hosts, Court and Saint Kabir. Saint, how are you, and what have you been up to this past week in and out of Destiny 2? I am doing well, coming off of a very stress-free Thanksgiving, which... It's not always the case, so, you know, feeling grateful for that. This week has just been a lot of prep and cleanup for the new season, focusing engrams, cashing out materials, cleaning up my vault. I'm down to 400, which is a big achievement for me. I, I'm a huge hoarder, so getting down to 400 is what I would consider quite low, uh, even though other people may have different standards. I, I did prep a couple builds. I got a Path of Burning Steps build and a Pyro Gale Gauntlets build prepped up for next season. And we'll, we'll talk more about uh, why that may be in just a moment. Court, how are you doing, man? What have you been up to? Hello, Saint Impetus. Hope you, you lads are doing well. Uh, yeah, a little bit of GMs, a little bit of seasonal content. Uh, I've been working on some of my infographics with the season 23 changes. So I'll be kind of uh, diving into all that great science stuff uh the first week uh next week uh outside of destiny playing a little bit of europa universalis 4 stardew and some call of duty we'll say the uh uh the newest call of duty the the zombies mode uh, i had pretty low expectations but uh, i've been enjoying quite quite a bit of that it's uh a lot of zombies to shoot um, which is great. Uh, they've they've learned something from the the ad dense activities that we've been getting in Destiny because uh, mm. it sure is dense in uh, in that mode. But uh, yeah, that's a lot of fun. Uh, Impetus, how are you doing? I'm doing well. I'm doing well. I have been finishing up my seasonal challenges so I could hit that bright dust goal. So I did knock that out this past week. Also knocked out my Gilded Conqueror times. Ooh. What am I up to now? Uh, I think it's like six or seven, um, but uh, I had Lightblade to go. So I finished that with the help of Bryce Roney and the Puckster, two of our patrons. Thank you very much for your assistance. That was a very nice, smooth run of the Lightblade. And then, yeah, I've also been working on kind of cleaning up my vault and drawing up a list of stuff that I want to go chase next season. Um, it's funny, whenever I hear people either say or uh, read it, you know, on online, like, oh yeah, my vault's down to a number and stuff. I always want to say like, you know, put slots after that. Cause you know, you, some people might take that at the wrong time. You, you say, you know, yeah, I'm only down to like 483, really happy with my <laughs> progress so far. I think that's probably the lowest I can go. And you, know, you can take that out of context if you're not, not ready here, but yeah, I am down to 483 slots in my vault. Mm. I do have a lot of armor from, um, that one uh, was, oh, Season of Defiance. I, I get those engrams so much, and I just f- always focus them in a high stat armor to help round out builds, because you never know, right? And you, know, you can get some pretty large spikes, but I, I probably do need to start cleaning out a few things. I had a lot of PvP-focused stuff that I was focusing for now that I've been playing more of that, but that is not the topic of today's goal. Uh, we are we are talking about some PVE stuff, but before we get into that court, we got some folks we got to thank, right? Yeah, we've got some uh, new patrons this week to thank. So we've got Fine George here, and we've got Navaronsky. Uh, they are also joining our much beloved sponsors. That is a Modern Viking, Asky and Monk, Bryce Aroni, Deacon. I am K Rose, Moonlight, and this moment. Thank you very much, guys. Now, if you want to send us any sort of feedback, you can. Uh, Go to our socials or the Destiny Massive Breakdowns Discord server. Uh, anything like positive, critical, and constructive feedback helps with the trajectory of the podcast and how we present and break down builds, activities, and much more in the PvE sandbox for all kinds of Destiny players. We, of course, want to extend a special thanks and appreciation to everyone that supports PvE, whether that's downloading and listening to our podcasts, showing it, uh, discussing it on our social media and our Discord server, or supporting us via Patreon. Uh, speaking of Patreon, if you'd like to support the show, please visit destinymassivebreakdowns.com and click the link to the Patreon site. You'll get access to the members-only channels and Discord, behind the scenes like episode previews, input on the future of the show, plus access to our legendary annual merch drop. Now, Saint, we've got quite an episode this week. What are we talking about? 
We are going to be talking about the Season of the Wish sandbox changes from the November 22nd twid. And that, that you know, it's one item, but that item ranges from artifact mods, you know, subclass updates, stasis reworks, exotic reworks. It is absolutely jam-packed with info. So a really interesting episode today. We also wanted to take just a second before we get into that to talk about our upcoming schedule, kind of getting into the holiday season and all that stuff. So looking at the next couple of months or so, in December, we'll have the whole crew here for the 3rd and the 10th, and then it will be just court and impetus on the 17th. We'll take one week off for the Christmas break, so to say, and the 24th, you know, Christmas Eve. We won't, we will not be sitting around uh, recording an episode, but impetus and myself should be back on the 31st and then pretty much back to regularly scheduled programming on the 7th of January. So we, we may continue to shift, you know, our, our, our scheduling. If, if the season really starts getting, you know, dragged out here to uh, potentially twice a month in the new year, but yeah, we'll, we'll be posting about that. And if anything else is going to change um, over the next couple of months, all right, small update before we get into all of the huge stuff that I'll, I'll throw you over to Impetus for. Impetus, we, we, we're getting some updates. Guardian, your guided games is, uh, is dying. And, and, and what's finally taken its place? Um, <laughs> another alliterative title, apparently. Uh, <laughs> Fireteam Finder, which is how we're going to be calling the LFG system in Destiny. We did finally get an update to this. Uh, I'm pretty sure that... Before before this heads up, um, we'd only heard about this feature in like the showcases, the two showcases. But mm -hmm. yes, we did finally get an article on Fireteam Finder and the release schedule. So this is going to have a bit of a staggered release period. Um, the majority of the article that did come out on this feature stressed that there's a lot of technical behind the scenes work that needs to be done and they of course want to make sure that this feature when it does fully release is working properly so we are going to have both a stress test and a beta period for fireteam finder the stress test will uh, be limited just to raids that will be coming out on november 30th from 9 a.m pacific standard time to 5 p.m pacific standard time where you'll be able to lfg for raids using the fireteam finder feature the beta period will begin sometime in December pending the stress test results. So no hard dates there. And then they are aiming for a full release in late January. That is when we are getting the LFG system, hopefully some time there. So if you are somebody who raids or if you would like to try out the feature, November 30th is when you can do the raid stress test. It's going to be pretty much the workday then, uh, the time period, that's 9 a.m. Pacific Standard Time to 5 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. And then if you do miss that date, no worries, beta period will be coming um, pretty much a week later, Some uh, well, hopefully a week later, but sometime in de December it will begin. And then, uh, yeah, we'll get it probably early in the first quarter of uh, 2024 for the full release there. So glad to get an update on that. I was beginning to worry as we were getting closer to the launch of the final season and not hearing anything that it wouldn't be coming out this season, but it will be. It will be coming out multiple different times in a few different periods. So uh, hopefully we can get to participate in that. Uh, I'm not sure if I'll be able to partake in the stress test, uh, but uh, if, if the three of us are in some form, I'm sure we will give you an update on how we felt like it went, but uh, we'll definitely be trying to get into the beta period. And then of course we'll be all over that with the full release. So that is the one update that we have on the Fireteam Finder. Let's actually get into Season 23 information here, starting with the artifact highlights. Uh, so, champion counters. Let's find out what we're dealing with. We got on the barrier side, sidearms. It's happening. We're going to be doing that triple forerunner GM run sometime mm -hmm. next season. Mm -hmm. We promised we would do it if it came back. It's coming back. We are men of our words, so uh, you can expect a, a full breakdown of forerunner, uh, anti-barrier forerunner <laughs> sometime next season when the GMs launch. For our overload options, auto rifles, pulse rifles, and for the first time, to the surprise of pretty much everybody, rocket launchers. 
That is a COM4 Overload Rocket Launcher mod in Season 23. Uh, of course, Auto Rifles, Pulse Rifles, pretty pretty good options there. Quicksilver Storm going to be uh, going strong for that final season. But yes, Rocket Launcher Overload. First time we've ever had an Artifact Champion mod for Rocket Launchers, and they give it to Overload of <laughs> all the champion types. This will be really... Um, interesting. It'll be interesting, you know, to play with. Uh, we were kind of trying to figure out what what rocket launchers, exotic rocket launchers, might pair well with this mod. I think Dragon's Breath seems to be the most likely option. Although Court mm -hmm. did uh, cheekily want to throw in a little little Deathbringer shout out. <laughs> so uh, you know, have fun with that, buddy. Well, we can do That'll our be... triple ro exotic uh, rocket launcher GM. Oh, <laughs> We've already committed to the Glades. We're going to be doing Forerunner. Are we really? Okay. Yeah, sure. We'll do Rocket Launcher Overload. Fine. As long as you're the one that's yeah, using great. Deathbringer, I'm cool with that. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I'm on a podcast with a bunch of Deathbringer hairs. What is this? <laughs> it's not hate. No, whoa, whoa, whoa. Slander. Slander. No. No, it's no. Just love Deathbringer. Deathbringer versus teleporting enemies is where I think it starts to lose me. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Okay. Well, you can use truth if you want. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And moving over to unstoppable options for next season, we've got bow and hand cannon are the champion counters for next season. And then columns two through five, we've got um, some excellent st solar uh, options here, actually. Really seems to be the season of solar some crazy strong solar options here uh kindling trigger torch heart of the flame revitalizing blast coming all the way back out of the out of the vault from season 17 rays of precision and Ar argent ordinance which used to be an armor mod pre lightfall now coming in as a column 5 artifact mod option here really really interesting um synergies pretty insane synergies to be honest here between all of those but uh, yeah very very excited to play with sunshot trusty ariana's vow vexmith the class prometheus lens uh, we've already mentioned but dragon's breath for sure is going to benefit the most from all of these different options especially once you get that catalyst unlocked so mm -hmm. very very exciting here we did get a few stasis ones not um i don't think they really wowed us but uh pillar of ice and hail the storm were kind of the big ones there we're going to get more into the stasis changes that they did outline below in, in just a second, so I won't give too much of a comment on that. But yeah, vast majority of these mods are going to be benefiting solar subclasses, solar weapons, uh, solar themed exotic armor. So we'll be uh, we'll definitely be recommending some solar builds here going into the season for sure, and then hopefully hopefully some stasis stuff as well. But for our next topic. It's the ability sandbox changes to cooldowns. I'm going to pass you over to court here. What's uh, what's the high level approach that Bungie's taken for our cooldowns for abilities going into season 23? Yeah, so this is quite a substantial change. I, I don't think I certainly wasn't expecting a massive change of the cooldown tiers. I know I had a kind of I, I felt like they were going to do a little bit of tweaking because, you know, this year we've been very strong in, in every mm -hmm. regard. We've got our, all of our light subclasses are up to parity on top of uh, Stasis getting getting some buffs, which we'll talk about later in the episode, plus Strand, which has, you know, came out very strong. and We've had, we've had some really strong aspects, which we talked about last week. Um, but, uh, yeah, so for the cooldown tiers, Bungie are taking the, quote, first step in uh, to addressing the lopsided and inconsistent balancing in, in regards to abilities so specifically we're talking about here uh, our grenades melees and class abilities uh, and this is across both the pve and the pvp sandbox uh, so they use a example of how higher tier uh, i.e longer cooldown abilities have a much larger uptime than intended for the potency level when you activate an, an ability that provides a flat bonus or use with mods like kickstart demo etc so you know we, we, we always talk about vortex grenade that's one of our favorites uh, on all three classes that's a very potent grenade but also has quite a, a longer cooldown uh they're wanting to offset the the power potential 
uh, by, you know, you're not going to gain as much grenade energy when you combine it with something like Grenade Kickstart or Demolitionist. Uh, so they'll be tweaking with the current tiering system where the base passive cooldown for each ability will also influence the amount of chunk energy. So we're, we're going to use the term chunk energy. I think that's kind of a, a pretty layman's term uh, just to kind of describe uh, when you kill something with demo, you get a piece uh, of uh, grenade energy and that's your, your chunk. Uh, so you receive again. This this just applies to grenades, melees, and class abilities. They they they, they talked about in this uh, twit. Uh, this isn't changing anything uh, with supers. Maybe something they'll they'll look at in the future. But supers, uh, any perks that grant you a chunk energy to your supers, it remains unaffected. So the high level here, just kind of, we'll look at the sort of three tiers. We've got our fastest charging, we've got our sort of in-between, and we've got our slowest charging. So the fastest, no reduction in the chunk energy providers. These abilities remain unaltered, so they'll functionally be the same as pre-season 23. Uh, you've got the in-between, so this is where things start going a little bit, uh, there's a little bit of tweaking. So those in between the fast and the slow charging will provide a slightly reduced burst of chunk energy depending on the ability's base cooldown. Scaling from the fastest, i.e. you get a smaller reduction, compared to the slowest, where you'll get a much larger reduction. Uh, and of course, the slowest charging, uh, they're looking at uh, the, the ballpark of uh, for grenades and class abilities. You'll get a 50% reduction in chunk energy providers. And for melee abilities, it's a 60%. So the, 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 the slowest charging, the, the bottom tier in terms of base cooldown for grenades and class abilities, you'll get a 50% reduction. And for melees, it's a 60. So these changes... Uh, again, they don't they don't uh, apply to providers of super energy. Uh, so we're talking about Thresh, mods, reworked exotics, etc. They are also excluding abilities that provide uh, intentionally uh, that, that intentionally grant a full refund. So think of hunters have knock them down with a melee recharge. That's that's not changing. You can still get your free melee. Uh, and it also excludes ability providers that targets only a single specific ability. And again, for hunters, Shinoba's Vow would be an example where it's only targeting skip grenades. So that these changes will not affect uh, uh, Shinoba's Vow. We'll talk about um, just some highlights and examples here. Uh, this is very like base level. We're, we're getting a little, little bit into the weeds in terms of theoretical because uh, things may really kind of chop and change we don't know the exact tier system we're not sure if it's going to be linear if it's going to be dynamic we know the top end and the, the lower end but uh, between you know zero percent up to 60 percent for melees we don't know what uh, the tiering system will work if it's going to be five to nine to twelve percent something like that we're not entirely sure how that's going to work out but uh, we'll, we'll we'll give some uh, kind of uh, high level examples here so all base cooldowns are going to be anchored to tier three of the respective stat we'll be referring to them as tier three as the base cooldown and then tier 10 is the maximum uh, so, for example, discipline for grenades, strength for melee, melees, uh, mobility for uh, hunter class abilities, resilience for titans, and recovery for warlocks. So let's take a look at the slower charging grenade. Uh, this is using Season 22 grenade cooldowns. Again, they may tweak them. We're not 100% confident if they're maybe going to tweak with some of the, the base cooldowns for some of them. So the slowest tier... It's 2 minutes 32 seconds or 152 seconds and that contains your flux grenade, your lightning grenade for arc, solar for solar grenade, uh, axiom bolt, uh, vortex and enhanced vortex for the void sandbox and the shackle grenade for the strand uh, uh, sandbox. At tier 10, this is 70, uh, 76 seconds, 1 minute 16. Uh, these values are going to be unchanged and are not affected by the upcoming changes. Again, assuming they're still using the Season 22 uh, grenade cooldowns. When you combine something like Demo, that's your grenade chunk per kill instance, the gains from using Demo is going to be reduced by 50%. So Demo, demo normally gives you 10% or 11% uh, uh, for each kill. This will be reduced when you're pairing it with Flux, Lightning, Solar, Axiom, Vortex, or shackle, it'll get reduced down to 5% or 5.45 if it's enhanced per kill 
instance when you're using those grenades. Uh, for fusion rifles, glaives and shotguns uh, and snipers, this is actually 20% per kill or 22 with enhanced and this will go down to 10% and 11% per kill instance when using uh, those grenades. Uh, there is an example in the TWID where they talked about uh, kind of the, the, the representation of the base cooldown. So under the pre-season 23, uh, using the one gain, uh, or sorry, 10% gain you get from one kill from demo. This represented a 15.2 seconds base cooldown for these grenades. Uh, I won't go into the maths here, uh, but that's just a high level there. Under the post season 23 changes, using the same example, this will represent a 7.6 seconds base cooldown for grenades. So picture it almost like a scale uh, they're they're kind of normalizing the amount of gains you get from uh, the, your upper tier grenades. They're bringing it way way down compared to before. Um, the best way to kind of make a comparison to this is to look at the fast charging grenades, which I'll cover and then I'll pass it over uh, to these guys. Just to kind of we'll we'll talk about it for a little bit. So our fast charging grenades again using season twenty two grenade cooldowns. Fireball is our fastest. That's your one minute. Uh, and four seconds at tier three or 64 seconds at tier 10 this is 31 seconds as this is the fastest grenade cooldown will receive no reduction to the gains from demo so you'll get your 10 percent or 11 percent if, if enhanced or 20 percent or 22 percent with the the uh, specific special weapons uh, so with no changes to its base cooldown on one demo game uh, gain you get 6.4 seconds base cooldown uh, so looking at the comparison here, uh, just with the uh, with the uh, the other tier, uh, it's six point four seconds versus seven point six. So that was formerly fifteen point two seconds. So you can see how much of a gain your higher end grenades would get. There was a much more kind of value to using vortex to using mm -hmm. something like shackle. Axiom Bolt, Solar, Lightning, Flux, compared to just using something a little bit, uh, a little bit weaker. Obviously, Fireball is a weaker grenade compared to uh, Vortex. Um, so yeah, Bungie have balanced the scales so that slower charging grenades are no longer getting the the biggest benefit. Uh, they still have that net positive. You you still have a, a much greater base cooldown, uh, but it's no longer out of band. Uh, and, you know, Bungie's really been trying to crunch down on that kind of out-of-band uh, kind of mentality with a lot of the abilities or weapons, uh, you know, anything that's been out-of-band, they want to kind of clip their wings. So, yeah, this aligns with the philosophy uh, of ensuring that, that while those grenades with slower charge uh, are generally the most potent, they don't have as much uptime uh, unless you build craft into it. So that I think that's maybe something that I've noticed with a lot of sentiment when it comes to this is you can still build craft into having your vortex grenade up every 15 seconds. If you're slaying mm -hmm. out with a demo gun, you, you will still get your, your grenade back. Not as fast as before, but you can still get it. We'll talk about the kickstart mods uh, and their nerfs later in the episode, but... The build crafting element is still there. You just have to really focus on it. Uh, so, lads, I've, I've talked quite plenty here, but uh, what's, what's our vibes here? I think it's just going to create more of an actual differentiation between something that has a low and, and, a, and a high cooldown timer because at the moment, it's really hard to even perceive the grenade tiers because you can get, you know, you can just get your grenade back so quickly. I've been playing at the end of the season here with like some pulse grenades on a build that relies heavily on getting ionic traces to get your grenade back. And man, you can get a pulse grenade back. It feels like every 15, 20 seconds. So at, you know, in that sense, uh, especially in PVE, it's like hard to even perceive the difference that something, um, you know, like a arc bolt grenade or something like that has such a lower cooldown because it's already so easy to get that cooldown low even on the high-end ones. Uh, Impetus, how you feeling? Yeah, I mean, this 
makes sense. Uh, we, there's a reason we would recommend the slowest charging grenades in all of our builds beforehand is because we could get them up by mm-hmm. specking into them, by, you know, build crafting into them completely fairly, right? We're not, you know, we're not cheesing or anything like that. We're using the tools and techniques that Bungie wants us to use, but we're getting those strongest, those strong grenades back super fast right i mean that's pretty much my my void warlock build is just committed to getting that enhanced vortex grenade up as much as possible taking advantage of mods but then also demolitionist perk and then even enhanced demolitionist when i can so i you know i don't like it when my abilities are a slower charging but they should be fairly because that's the reason why I always recommend Vortex is it's stronger than all the other Void Grenades, and I can get it back just as quickly as I can with those other ones. So it would make sense for it to uh, to be balanced out in some form. I think where this will really be interesting, and this is kind of where we're going to get into theoretical territory, is how those middle-tier grenades, you know, your, your healing grenades, your dust field grenades, your swarm grenades, the flashbang, where those all fall. We don't know at this point in time. We will find out. By the time the episode comes out, of course, and, you know, everyone begins to start testing this stuff. But, um, yeah, I mean, healing healing grenade in particular will be a very interesting one, especially for um, day one raids. So we're, we're all getting ready for the final shape. But then, you know, we've also got a, a day one dungeon coming around the corner. I know there's going to be plenty of teams out there getting ready for that. The healing grenade cooldown will be of significant importance for those teams that are actually trying to clear the dungeon uh, in a race format. So, and, and of course, in general, but especially for the players that are trying to race and, and go fast, getting that cooldown back as quickly as possible will be the difference between potentially coming in first and potentially coming in tenth. You never know. So, I, we don't know how this is going to play out, but we do have some some theoretical numbers here. Uh, let's say, for example, that our middle grenade tier has a reduction of 25%. Um, so right now we've got uh, Flashbang, Healing, Swarm, Dustfield having a tier 3 base cooldown of 91 seconds. That's 1 minute and 31 seconds. And then the max cooldown at tier 10, 45 seconds. Demolitionist gains right now. Uh, if there is a reduction of 25%, a hypothetical one of 10%, that would bring us down to 7.5%. Remember, if we're using enhanced demolitionists, that would be 11% normally, getting reduced down to 825 And then if we're using demolitionist on certain special weapons, a 25% reduction of 20% is 15 And then 22% if we're using enhanced demo, bring it down to 16.5% here. That will represent, well, the using the pre-season 23, right, one instance of a 10% demo reduction would represent a 9.1 second base cooldown for our middling grenades. Post-season 23 changes, that will represent a 6.825 second base cooldown for the grenades there. So definitely will be noticeable. Uh, again, this is hypothetical. We don't actually know what that reduction is going to look like here because these grenades all fall in the middle section here. Um, yeah, I've, it'll be interesting to see. But again, I do understand why the abilities team felt like this needed to be happen. It makes perfect sense with their balance philosophy. Court, what are your thoughts on uh, the balance philosophy and then kind of how the tiers are stacking up potentially going into season 23? I think it's a good change. Obviously, you know, like it's it is a net loss in terms of we are getting nerfed. There are nerfs here, but mm-hmm. it's it's a meaningful nerf because you know Bungie has made it very clear, especially in the last even two years, where like they want you to use these powerful grenades, but there has to be some sort of cost attached to them, and this is the cost. Uh, we've been getting quite you know, free uh, with, you know, we, we recommend demo a lot with uh, with a lot of our, our, our weapon picks, not just for the demo gains uh, for killing, but also the you get your free reload when you, you, you cast off your grenade. Um, so, like, I don't think we're not going to recommend demo. That's still going to be, like, a top pick for a lot of our kind of ad clear weapons for, for any sort of special weapons, if that's kind of one of our top picks for for them. But, um, 
yeah, I'm I'm frankly pretty okay with this. Uh, I I I see a lot of kind of complaint about this is a bit extreme, uh, but to be honest, like looking at from, uh, I don't have like I, I can remember seeing uh, a uh, it was a a chart of the the slower gener uh, the slower cooldown grenades had this massive bar compared to your your uh, your your kind of faster charging grenades uh, and that was all to do with your sort of base cooldown uh, and if you you combined it with grenade kickstart you combined it with demo you just see this really warped like we're getting all these really powerful grenades now but we're not really u utilizing something like uh, arc bolt or something like uh, let me have a look at the uh, the grenade tier here. So something like um, skip grenade if you're not on Shinobu's vow. Um, the you know firebolt isn't that powerful, but that's the whole point of it. It's your kind of primer to add scorch. Uh, you know, your twenty scorched stacks or your thirty with ashes. It's supposed to be that quick and then prime your your scorch then combine it with something else uh make that ignition by the time you've done all that loop there's various solar synergy on top of that you know you pick up your fire sprite you pick up all your 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 aspects and your fragments to to get your firebolt grenade back it's not a potent grenade but the whole idea is it's supposed to connect and loop into a, a much wider perspective compared to something like solar grenade which is a lot more powerful <laughs> those those grenades are much more potent, but we see it more often. Uh, so I'm okay with with that idea of them really kind of crunching down on the sort of scales here. And the way the way I've been visualizing it, like even in in real life, is just one of these like law scales where you've got flux grenade on. Uh, or, sorry, firebolt grenade on one tier, and you've got solar grenade on the other, and it's just like solar grenade. Uh, solar grenade weighs it down so far that you're never going to use firebolt. And sure, we might not use firebolt uh, in the future, but it, it just normalizes everything into a much more kind of linear tier system. Uh, and like I said, like I think we'll still be able to build craft into uh, maximizing our build potential. Impetus, you mentioned vortex grenade on uh, void uh, void walker. Uh, like I think that's still going to be a thing. It's not necessarily going to be a massive nerf, but if you really build into it, then you probably won't notice much, if anything. Yeah, for me, I think what this change, while I like this change a lot, I think this will really throw into um, sharp relief the difference between the grenades that have support from an exotic armor piece dedicated to their function and mm. the grenade mm. types that do not have an exotic armor tied to their function firebolt again it's one of the fastest charging ones so i can understand why that one in particular does not have an exotic armor but um yeah for vortex is covered we got controversial right we can get to that enhanced uh version it's incredibly strong um you can the the whole point of controversy is to get even more grenade energy back that's not getting changed at all so yes vortex can can take that that hit to its grenade tier because it has something that's kind of working in its favor in the background with the whole function of controversy hold to say nothing of devour which we'll we'll get into the changes coming to devour in a, a minute or two but yeah, I think this will really this will be interesting, and I gotta look at the grenade tiers. Do we have some slower charging grenades that don't have any solar grenades? Kind of a weird one because oh, Axiom Bolt doesn't have a, an exotic armor. Am I correct? Yeah, I and mean, I think uh, you know a lot of times I'm thinking like other categories because when I think like arc again back to the example of pulse grenades, you got ionic traces. Um, you know, right. solar, you have fire sprites, which is helping a little bit if you're able to lean in on that, but it could be punishing if not. Yep. I think yep, you're right. I think with anything, this is another like foundational change where in the future, because I'm looking at thermite here, which is it's not the, the slowest, but it's like the tier down from 152 seconds. Uh, mm -hmm. It's 121 seconds thermite is where, you know, we, we talked about in our grenade episode a few episodes back where, you know, there's some grenades in here that do need a little bit of a little bit of TLC, to be honest. Um, you know, I look at suppressor, which shares the same 
uh, 121 seconds. It's in a different sandbox. It has attachments to Devour, which we'll talk about shortly as well. But you know, something like Thermite needs a little bit of, uh, I think, a little bit of love compared to some of the other things. Um, so if this is a change for them to write, okay, now we can start looking at some of these grenades, we can really put them into different tier systems. I think this is where the tier system works a lot better than what we have with the super tier systems, uh, which we'll we'll talk about a, a, a again later on as well. Um, but uh, yeah, I, I hope there's some changes. There, there's just a few kind of grenades, as we talked about before, that I think, yeah, okay, like this is quite a longer cooldown. It's got no exotic attached to it. There's nothing that you can really build into it if you're not on a specific uh, like subclass within a, a class type. Um, but uh, yeah, I yeah, that's, I think it's a great change constructively. Uh, but mm-hmm. I do appreciate that there there are a few folks who are a bit kind of concerned as to the you know the the impact this may have. Hmm. All right. Well, let's talk about uh, let's talk about survivability a little bit. This is a topic from just a few weeks ago, and Bungie knows that we're pretty tough. Um, basically, there I think the sentiment was players are so tough that it can be difficult to balance the game around their survivability at the top end. So. In order to bring that in line a little bit, we have got some nurse to Woven Mail, Restoration, and Devour, which are pretty much your core three here. Woven Mail, DR, is being reduced from 55 to 45. Man, that's still really high. Uh, just going to keep going through these, but I, I don't think that that's going to see any huge reduction in usage there. Next up, we have Restoration. Uh, These are changes to Restoration times 1 and times 2. Times 1 is currently 40, and it's going to be going down to 35 HP per second. That originally launched all the way up at 50. Uh, Restoration times 1 is is available from Base Healing Grenades, Ember of Mercy, Soul Invictus, Phoenix Cradle, Laura Lee, Precious Scars, and Karmstein Armlets, which we'll talk about a little bit later and then Restoration times 2 is currently 65 HP per second, and that's going to be brought down to 50. At launch, Restoration times 2 was originally 80 HP per second. Restoration times 2 is provided by Phoenix Dive, Heat Rises, Touch of Flame, Enhanced Healing Grenade, Stronghold, and Karmstein Armless Finishers, which is, uh, I believe, part of that rework there. Mm-hmm. Next up, we have Devour. The global change to Devour, the healing amount, both on activation and when it's refreshed, is being reduced from a full heal to 100 HP, unless the Feed the Void aspect is equipped. It will now refill both health and shield sections more smoothly, rather than adding health to each section separately. So Feed the Void Warlocks, basically your your enhanced Devour, Increased grenade energy regeneration per kill while Devourer is active. The amount will vary based on the enemy that you defeated. And it will still improve the strength of Devourer's heal when it's equipped. So basically, if you're using Feed the Void on Warlock, Devourer will pretty much be what it is now. And if you're not, I believe it's going to be about half of what it is now on the HP front from a full heal potential um, to 100 HP. So... Still going to be really effective, just you've got to be on Warlock if you want the full Devourer effect, which, you know, I'll start off kind of the commentary on this section by saying that I'm honestly totally okay with that because I feel like that brings back a little bit of class identity, leaving Warlocks with the full capability and giving, you know, your your Hunters and Titans kind of the light version or the, you know, 70% kind of version of whatever it is that each class that it really wants to capitalize it on uh, is working with. Court, uh, I'll, you know, throw it over to you. Any any other thoughts on our, our DR changes, our kind of nerfs here to Woven Mail, Restoration, and Devour? I'm not, I'm not that surprised. So the DR for Woven Mail is now 45%. Um, 
compared to Void Over Shield uh, and Stasis Over Shield, which are fifty percent. So it's it's now officially below our kind of pre-existing Over Shields. Um, it's not a substantial change. Uh, what was it originally? It was like sixty percent back when it launched. Uh, I don't have the values to hand, but it was it was, it was some, like sixty percent DR is crazy high um, mm-hmm. compared to like Void Overshield, but uh, not surprised. The restoration one, I mean, I'm looking at the stats for when they were at launch, fit at, uh, eighty HP per second for resto times two. That was crazy <laughs> back in yeah. uh, season of the haunted because I can remember people were just in duality, just sat in in their lowerly splendor. Um, flame uh just bonking away and we'll talk about that later as well but uh yeah that's uh again no surprise the rest of times one's not a major change but rest of times two is now the same as what rest of times one was at launch back in haunted so just to take that in mind so i think restoration is still going to be really potent uh like a solar is pretty like a great class to to kind of keep yourself uh, fully kind of healed up, especially if you're a warlock, uh, and if you're you're kind of building into support based classes, even Titan, like we mentioned, Precious Scars. There, I'm saying you'll talk about that no doubt later mm-hmm. on uh, when we get to the exotics. But uh, you know, I think again, it's it's a lot of kind of tweaks here, but it kind of makes sense if when you kind of widen the the kind of context where we do have a lot more exotics now compared to we uh compared to season the haunted where we didn't have all these reworks we didn't have all these uh, extra kind of abilities the devour one um yeah to your point saying about i think actually we talked about this when we we're talking about uh, like the subclass uh kind of abilities and like how how they're kind of feeling like our vibe series uh, we did a few episodes ago and i was totally like pro like uh, i'm okay with tight uh titans and hunters having devour but it makes more sense that warlocks who originally had devour they were the only class that could that could have devour would have the original or the uh, quote enhanced devour so I'm completely okay with this. I don't think it's going to necessarily affect my Void uh, void Hunters builds, uh, which does use the Ver to some extent. Um, I think it's like, I'm, I'm okay, completely okay with having uh, one subclass having a, a slight edge over the others. And we see in that same sandbox, like Hunters are all about invis. That is their kind of, uh, that's their, their fantasy level. Uh, whereas, you know, Titans and Warlocks can get invis, but not to the same extent. So I, I'm I'm okay with them just kind of, you know, we've, we've seen a little bit of uh, a lot of the classes kind of being merged a little bit, but as, you know, Strand came out, you know, you'd have your your enhanced um, threadlings for, for Warlocks. Uh, with Stasis, you'd have the whole kind of split of Hunters are... The, the sort of the, the keen eye for slow titans are for shatter and warlocks are for freeze so like i'm i'm really like thumbs up with this whole idea of splitting the sandbox into each kind of individual subclass uh impetus what's your thoughts here i'm going to take the opposite position actually all right okay um, the devourer change surprised me the most out of everything in the article i was not expecting I think Bungie has been very committed to having a shared sandbox, and with the 3.0 changes to the light subclasses, it seemed like the original idea of the verbs was to have a shared foundation for all three subclasses, and then um, for a bit of a subclass identity, you would simply limit or expand the number of opportunities to dip into certain verbs. Um, In the case of Void, Warlock's got a whole aspect devoted to Devour uh, It was quite strong and also made it incredibly easy to both get Devour, to activate it, I should say, and then to keep it active. So to see them split it off to where we now have a different version of Devour, and it's not its own tier in the case of something like Restoration, where you know maybe everybody gets Devour times one, but then Warlock's get to have... Uh, 
Devour times two is just enhanced Devour. That surprises me a little bit because I think this could end up becoming a little bit confusing for new players or players who are maybe hopping onto Warlock for the first time or maybe uh, players who have been Warlock the whole time they play Destiny hopping over to Void Titan or Void Hunter to find out the Devourer doesn't quite work the same way that it does once they have, with, you know, when they have their Feed the Void aspect. And it gets me thinking about some of the other verbs where they might end up applying this kind of philosophy to, like Threadlings, for example. Uh, right now, hunters with threadling grenades, two two charges of threadling grenades are kind of eating up mm. PvP right now. Um, would there be some changes where uh, Bungie comes in and says, you know what, we want threadlings to really adhere to the warlock fantasy on Strand, so we're actually going to limit the way that threadlings behave, or we're going to enhance the way that threadlings behave on warlock to uh, to maybe keep that fantasy in line. Um, maybe do they look at overshields, right? They've been pretty strict on who can get access to overshields, provided you're not a void titan. Do they maybe take that same approach? I don't know how I feel about that if that were to happen. I think this is obviously the, the first go around here where we're limiting or, or tweaking the functionality of a verb across the different subclasses. I, I do worry about whether or not that will be communicated appropriately in-game. Um I'm fine with the woven mail stuff. I'm fine with the restoration nerfs. Obviously, those are incredibly powerful. Devour is also incredibly powerful. But I personally, from from a point of view of all all of the player base, just thinking about it from a balancing point of view, I'd rather you just limit it for consistency's sake, even on Warlock, but just allow Warlocks to have maybe um, more ways to dip into Devour rather than having just a straight-up better version of Devour over Hunter or Titan. So... Again, I don't feel too strongly about it. It's just reading those changes kind of was like, ooh, I'm not sure if that's the direction I would like them to take, but I'm only a player. I'm not a developer. Um, we'll see how it plays out. Obviously, as the Warlock main here for the podcast, the Enhanced Devourer is fine for me, right? Um, it, it's great. You know, I still get to take advantage of what is one of the strongest, if not the strongest, verbs in the sandbox right now. And Voidwalker still does remain an excellent solo activity option for Warlock people. But um, yeah, I just don't know, kind of looking at it from a 30,000 foot view, if I like the way that they've gone about making this um, tweak, tuning, nerf, whatever you, whatever you want to call it. But yeah, um, th th those are my thoughts. I hear you on the consistency aspect of communicating to the player because restoration times one, restoration times two is pretty clear. But if it's just devour and it's doing different things, not devour times one, devour times two, eh, it feels a little weird. So, like, is it going to say enhanced devour <laughs> See, on mm. on my UI screen? Right, like if it just says devour, you wouldn't know looking at a warlock. Like if you're watching a YouTube video of a warlock playing an activity, mm. that their yeah. devour is actually doing more for them than if you were to hop onto your void titan or your void hunter and you see devour show up on your screen and it's not giving yeah. you the same amount of heal. Right, that's my concern there. Yeah. As far as I'm aware, like Enhanced Devourer is more of a community kind of uh, name for it. I don't think it's sure. going to like change. Uh, but yeah, no, I, I, I mean, we've we've been seeing Bungie kind of clamping down on on like uh, like duplicated things. Like restoration is now the the standard for healing over time. Whereas mm -hmm. we still have some other kind of outliers that give you, quote, healing, but it's not restoration. Uh, so, yeah, communic communicating to the player is, like, a big thing that I absolutely, like, out of everything that's changing here. Obviously, this Devour change isn't a, a, a kind of a change due to that. They're not changing, changing it because people are finding it difficult to understand what Devour is. It's because of the survivability aspect here. But this kind of uh, point about uh, will we have Devour or will we have Devour plus enhanced Devour, is that going to be a bit too you know complicated or if it's going to be uh, too much for a newer player to understand uh, is definitely a, a good point to make here. All right. All right. Uh, Court, you want to take the rest of the abilities before we get into stasis? Yes, sir. So we have some buffs and nerfs just with the uh, the rest of our subclasses before we talk about stasis here. Um, Arc Hunter. So there was a big change about uh, shoulder charges and uh, it's more of a PvP oriented change, but I think it also affects PvE because you could do shoulder charge plus uh, one-two punch 
uh, that kind of funky business they've kind of eliminated that they, they're, they're getting rid of the the, the ability to uh, um, tr- to trigger that uh, just so they can offset that and kind of uh, make one two punch its own ident- identity without these massive damage stacking uh, so uh, we'll obviously talk about some of the melee changes and glaives stuff uh, shortly as well but anyway so arc hunter Tempest Strike, uh, they have increased the base damage from 110 to 125. Doesn't sound a lot, but again, that's that's not counting uh, multipliers, activity multipliers, all that kind of jazz. Uh, they've reworked the tracking behavior to be more consistent at longer ranges and improved the consistency when traveling over rough terrain. Quickly, real quick for me, as the hunter of the podcast here, big thumbs up. I am a little bit of a Tempest Strike stan, so uh, I'm very happy with that they are tweaking with Tempest Strike. I think it still needs a little bit a little bit extra, but because you can apply Jolt from a, a kind of a longer range uh, as Tempest, can, Tempest Strike can do that, if you're not that enthused with the combination blow kind of uh, um, uh, the, the other uh, art aspects that uh, escape my mind here which i'm having a look now uh, yeah using combination blow with your uh flow state and lethal current if you're not that interested in doing that you'd rather have something that that provides a, a longer range ability tempest strike is your friend as i've recommended before uh but yeah some nice changes here over in the strand titan we've got the banner of war <laughs> so um I think uh, Strand Titans will still be eating fairly good here. So they've increased the number of enemy defeats to level each level up each stack of banner by about double. Uh, so it takes double the time to, to level up. They've increased the amount of time added per enemy defeat at each level to compensate. So still... It's still going to be eaten good. Uh, again, these values will vary depending on the type of target defeated, and they fixed an issue where unpowered swords were being granted a damage boost by Banner of War. Uh, I'll finish off here with Solar Titan. <laughs> Throwing hammer. Uh, picking up a hammer now returns melee energy over 1.4 seconds rather than instantly. Uh, they've increased the projectile tracking strength by about 20%, and Soul Invictus uh, reduced maximum sunspot duration down to 12 seconds where it was 20. Uh, this duration is only ever reached when the player is standing inside the sunspot and the sunspot duration without the owner standing inside remains unchanged at 5 seconds. Uh, I'll, I'll talk about this way as well. So the Super Tears, Well of Radiance and War of Dawn, they're moving from Tier 5 to Tier 4. That's uh, um, Four, f- sorry, 417 seconds down to 455 seconds. And quote, suite of future changes planned to reduce Well's dominance in PvE and push the gameplay space of these two supers further apart. Uh, I'll start us off here real quick. I-, I alluded to the super tiers. I don't think it's been, like on paper, I think the super tier system worked fine. But in practice, especially in PvP, obviously I don't want to get into the weeds of PvP on a PvE uh, podcast. It just it hasn't worked, uh, I, I think, as what Bungie expected. Uh, and all the supers now uh, occupy just three tiers out of the original five. Um, so a lot of uh, your roaming supers are tier two. You're kind of middling or tier three, and then Blade Barrage, Deadfall Tether, Silence Squall, Word of Dawn, Chaos Reach, and Well of Radiance are now tier four. So uh, I'll hand it back to Saint here. What's your what's your thoughts about uh, Banner of War and Throwing Hammer? Banner of War, I dare I say, not even much of a nerf. Uh, compared to what I thought was coming for Banner of War, it it could have been way worse. Now, yeah, it's a little more to get the the engine running, but that's always kind of in the case, in my opinion, that it took a little bit of effort to kind of get things flowing. And once they were going, it, you know, you're just this unstoppable force of strand melee. So I'm really f- fine with that one. I I don't know the throwing hammer one. Yeah, I mean, I I don't know. I guess I knew this is coming for a long time. I really was curious to see how they were going to implement this without just like completely neutering it. And I do think that Solar, Solar Hammer will still be quite strong, despite the fact that it is going to 
not it's it's never going to be the same with the with the bonking a boss from close range so yeah i'm a little bummed about the solar hammer one but at the same time i i don't know what else they could have done to not totally kill this loop of you bonking things with your hammer i think that the increased projectile tracking strength will definitely be a lot of fun I, you know, even though if it's not meta, um, I definitely think that that will be enjoyable. Um, as a reminder, you can use your throwing hammer with dune marchers, and when you hit a target, it will then chain lightning. So I feel like there will be a lot of really fun uh, <laughs> stuff going on there. I mean, what, what a weird elemental synergy! Uh, a solar yeah. hammer procking arc energy, <laughs> big time Thor uh, Mjolnir <laughs> type of a feeling, and I think that. Uh, speaking of Mjolnir, if they ever make a pair of gauntlets um, that would allow your hammer to, to track back to you, oh, we're, then, oh. <laughs> yeah, I would be all over that. Mjolnir's touch or something like that. I don't know. Right, I mean, just, okay. just throwing it out there. Uh, would would live for that. But yeah, so yeah, Sunspot's nerfed, Throwing Hammer nerfed, Banner nerfed. They were all insanely strong, and I think that they'll still be pretty strong after yeah. these nerfs, so I don't think they were too much of a reaction or anything like that. Yeah, the... Wait, the well, go ahead, Court. I was going to ask you what's your thoughts about Word of Dawn um, with the super tier change here. Man. I, and specifically the push the gameplay space of these two supers apart, uh, further apart. The only time that Bubble has been used since the Witch Queen came out pretty much is in Trials, and having every single trials match just be wells and bubbles and that's how everything ends was really annoying because there was no guaranteed way to counter it. I think that putting them in the same tier with a few options to counter them, um, that's great. And yeah, I mean, Bubble has like totally lost its place in the meta PvE since Witch Queen came out and Vow of the Disciple basically whenever they got tuned to be the same exact damage increase and i yeah i i don't i don't know what they're gonna do but my two cents would be keep well of radiance as the survivability and have it just grant radiant like outright mm. so it's it's not as much of a buff and then have uh word of dawn weapons of light be the definitively higher buff um, i mean what they're yeah. describing here is obviously the the new supers that solar warlocks and uh, void titans are getting um in the final shape with their mm. uh, with those supers and like, they're they're very i think like word of dawn and the the new void super are very very different um mm -hmm. support kind of aggro based build but um yeah well of radiance and the new one uh very interesting how how those two will perform uh, on top of the the new ones. Um, Impetus, what what's your vibes with the? Uh, if you've got anything anything to say about Strand stuff, but uh, specifically Well of Radiance here, I I never thought I'd see the day when Chaos Reach and Well of Radiance would be <laughs> back on the same super tier, but here we are. Um, yeah, I I still don't know what to make of the the super tier structure. I it. Made a lot of sense back when it debuted back in, uh, oh gosh, Season of the Lost, I guess that was the 30th anniversary patch is when we first had this breakdown. Um, yeah, I, again, it's annoying to deal with. I'm not going to defend it in PvP at all. Um, I just, I, we're, I, we've got an image here of where all the all the supers fall along the, the middle three tiers here, and I just, I can't help but feel for Titans having the vast majority of their supers in the now longest cooldown um like warlocks are pretty evenly balanced we've got two in the fastest uh charging tier three in the middle tier and then four um hunters you've got three in the fastest charging two in the middle and then uh five in the slowest charging titans you've got bubble in the fastest charging you've got burning mall in the middle and everything else is in the slowest charging tier i should and point out burning mall used to be in tier two <laughs> so yes it, it could have been bubble at tier four nothing tier three and then everything else <laughs> in tier two <laughs> 
<laughs> I I sincerely hope that the Void Axes are in that middle tier. I would be shocked if the abilities team really did throw you another super that'll end up in tier two. I <laughs> that is that would be devastating. Um, yeah, I, it'll just be really interesting to see what the new supers where the new supers land. Um, I think it'll 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 matter a lot more for Titans than it will for Warlocks and Hunters, is what I'll say. We we can afford to have something put in the slowest. It would it would stink, but um, you know we've got other options for that fastest charging tier in the middle tier. Um, but yeah, Titans cannot afford to have that that third Void Super be in tier two. My goodness. Mm-hmm. Uh, what I wanted to ask you, um, Saint, actually, because I don't have too many other thoughts on these changes here, but as a Titan now that that does run Strand and Solar, especially in in-game activities, do you think this is going to really increase the value of the Pugilist perk, or do you think with the changes coming to the Pugilist perk as something that did generate melee chunk energy that it, it's not going to matter as much and that you'd probably still want to look for something else in calm three for those the short range weapons where pugilist commonly is, is is considered to be an option like a shotgun or maybe even certain fusion rifles yeah i mean it definitely has me second guessing so i've been talking about sword breaker because i love to use sword breaker with the bill because the way curse for all synergizes with it and i've been using threat detector mm-hmm. and- and I think I'm finally going to swap that out because I was kind of already on the edge between that and Enhanced Pugilist. Now I'm going to be swapping that out and putting Enhanced Pugilist on there um, for for the whole Banner of War build next season. So, yeah, I mean, to your, to your point, I do see like a little bit more value in there, especially because of the way, yeah, that the whole sandbox is changing and we've got mod changes coming in as well at the end here. So I think think that it gives it just that extra little five percent of value or however you want to qualify it but yeah it's got me interested for sure yeah the image that uh Imtis mentioned here is actually from my spreadsheets um so if you're interested in seeing a uh, visualization of the tiering ranks uh for hunter titan and warlock all on sort of one page it's not a fully fledged infographic but it's just something on uh, i kind of threw together uh, on my spreadsheets if you want to have a look and that's updated for for next season yeah it uh and that'll also be linked in our uh, show description of course so if you're listening along you can uh just scroll right down to the bottom you should be able to click on that guy and, and check out all the info that court is talking about all right let's get into stasis baby mm-hmm. <laughs> the long-awaited stasis uh cha- changes tweaks light part touches. one <laughs> <laughs> part, part one of undefined number of parts here um we got some we'll go through the the quick um stat changes made to several fragments i'm not even going to describe what each each fragment does just for time so we can actually get into the ability changes here so there are a total of five fragments that had tweaks made to stat bumps stat nerfs uh whisper of hedrons they have removed the minus 10 strength penalty whisper of impetus added plus 10 resilience whisper of shards removed plus 10 resilience whisper of hunger they have removed the minus 10 to mobility and to intellect and replaced that with a minus 20 to strength and whisper of bonds they have removed the minus 10 discipline that whisper will still have a minus 10 to its intellect Moving over to the actual tweaks made to various subclasses. We'll start on Hunter here. The Withering Blade melee. They have increased projectile speed by 10%. They have increased the maximum projectile lifetime by 10%. They have increased the maximum bounce count. I love that that's an official uh, something that you can code into something from 2 to 3. And they have increased the tracking consistency. I think overall we can just say they should be making it a little bit better to play with. The Winter Shroud aspect also had some increases. Increased slow stacks applied to PvE combatants from 40 to 60. They have also increased the slow duration applied to PvE combatants from 4 seconds to 8 seconds. That's now twice as long. And they've increased the slow detonation size versus PvE combatants from 8 meters to 9 meters. Court, how are you feeling about the hunter changes here? Pretty good because Winter Winter Shroud used to be sixty back when Stasis launched. 
um, uh, across both sandboxes. It's still going to be 40 in PvP, but uh, yeah, this is very interesting because I'll talk about it a little bit more um, when we get to our exotic armor changes next up. But um, yeah, Winter Shroud's a little bit more appealing now. I wasn't a big fan. It was more of a PvP thing for me uh, when I used uh, Stasis Hunter, but that change is nice. The Withering Blade is a nice quality of life update. The, the bounce count from two to three is great. Um, I think it kind of aligns it with the, uh, the Strand melee a mm. little bit. Strand melee's obviously got a little bit more kind of potency and it can kind of uh, like uh, dot between each combatant and kind of go through them and you can catch it back to get uh, your 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 melee charge back up. Uh, thready spike, but uh, uh, Withering Blade obviously has the, the, the ability to slow on contact as well. Uh, so yeah, nice changes here. Um, yeah. Sweet. Love to hear that. Let's move over to Titan. Titans definitely needed a lot of work here on the Stasis subclass, and they got two um, bug fixes. You know, it's part one. Remember that. Stasis changes part one here. So for the Shiver Strike, they have fixed an issue where it would not function with the Melee Kickstart mod. Good thing nothing is happening to the Melee Kickstart mod. That's going to be a great change next season. And then the Howl of the Storm aspect, they have fixed an issue where it was not consistently freezing targets in contact with the created Stasis Crystals. That should be nice, again, for uh, that area of effect playstyle that you really want to lean into with Howl of the Storm. Saint, how, how are we feeling about the Titan changes? Part one. Uh, Yeah. Hey, uh, don't forget that when you cast your super again, you freeze people near you. That's so true. that's totally yep. that that totally or Blackburn. Gonna, yeah, we're we are, dude. I <laughs> have not um yeah, haven't haven't used Stasis Titan. Haven't really used Stasis Titan very much recently. And this is like a little bit uh, better, you know, it kind of headed in the right direction type of a thing. But how the storm, the way that it's able to generate crystals can be nice in PVE, but the consistency issues was really only ever a PVP thing for me when it comes to using how the storm. Um, I definitely was using that more back during like, um, you know, kind of King's fall era before all the changes to the mod sets and stuff like that when font of might was which much more impactful there so yeah since then i really have not been touching stasis titan and i don't i don't know if this is going to do it uh how the storm does have in you know shattering their crystals has some interesting synergy with some of the artifact mods you know hail the storm was basically the the one that has to do with when you shatter an encased target um the crystals deal more damage and it releases you know, it kind of an, it sounds like an AOE effect. Um, and then, yeah, I don't, I don't know. Maybe with maybe combining this with some artifact mods, uh, it might be worth it. But yeah, just by itself is kind of really was hoping for more. Uh, I don't really know what else to say. It doesn't, doesn't really feel like much. It feels like we just got a couple things unnerfed and the consistency is better. Um, but hey, Warlock's... Warlock's got a little more than that, I guess, more consistency um, and and some other changes that I think will, will kind of pair in with their abilities nicely. Utis, I'll, I'll go back to you for this one. So Warlock's got a change to Frost Pulse where it's significantly increased consistency against fast-moving targets. I think that'll be most notable in PvP. And then the Freeze Detonation side size versus PvE combatants increased from 8 meters to 8.5 meters. Definitely am not going to notice that change at all, but sweet, uh, I'll take it. And then Penumbra Blast, they have increased the detonation size when impacting the environment from 1.5 meters to 2 meters. Definitely won't notice that. I'll probably be cursing myself for hitting the environment and not the person that I was aiming at, but uh, I'll take it. You know, we will we will take it. You know what else I'm going to take? The changes to the stasis grenades. Uh, Saint, what's happening to Glacier Cold Snap grenades? Yeah, Glacier grenades are having their base cooldown reduced from 152 to 121 seconds, which is pretty substantial. 
The cooldown pen penalties for dust fuel grenades and cold snap grenades when bleak watcher is equipped have also been updated so that their cooldown matches the new glacier grenade cooldown, which I'm sure that if you have you know, played Ozzy Warlock recently, you probably had the thought of, I could use more stasis turrets. You know, I'm just not putting out enough stasis turrets. We need to, we need to crank that up. On the cold snaps, fix an issue where the seeker was not consistently created in the direction the projectile was moving after a bounce, so should just generally feel more consistent. Increase the aiming shape size from 0.9 meters to 1.4 which I'm not, I'm not exactly sure what that means. I think that has to do with the way that it will track onto a target. Um, not really sure. Arming shape size. Yeah, I don't, I don't really know about that one. And then lastly, tracking strength now ramps down from full strength to zero over the course of the grenade's lifetime, rather than immediately turning off after the seeker had reached a 0.5 second lifetime. So I think that that will basically just result in it being very strong at first and then tapering off instead of just being kind of on or off, which seemingly sounds nice. Um, yeah, I, do you guys understand the increased arming shape size at all? What is, do you know what that means? Not a clue. Uh, as the resident scientist for the podcast, I have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> um, I... I, yeah, I I don't know. Like I, I was trying to think what that could mean, but like because it's based on meter, then like I thought it was maybe timer, but no. Um, I think it might just be related to, um, perhaps when it spawns in the world, like when you cast it, cast out a cold snap. I don't know if it's maybe that kind of shape around it is maybe what they're alluding to, but I'm I'm not mm. entirely sure. Yeah, we'll have to wait and see on that one, how that actually plays out in the game. Um, and then one more change before we get into the future changes or kind of forward-looking one. Stasis abilities just freeze in general. Increase special ammo weapon damage versus frozen targets from 5% to 10%, which, uh, I mean, hey, an extra 5% damage for leading into... The sandbox verb is always appreciated. And then lastly, I'll, I'll round this section out with future stasis changes. A new stasis keyword tentatively called frost armor aimed at survivability when running stasis and particularly when not using rhyme and chains that grant uh, overshield and DR when near crystals uh, respectively. Additional tuning changes and reworks to existing stasis fragments. So maybe some larger changes that we are we are hoping for now. Um, seems, sounds like it could still be down the line here with some changes to uh, existing fragments. And then adding additional behavior to the harvest aspects, which would be much welcomed. Um, okay, before we move on to our exotic armor section, uh, you know, Court impetus, closing thoughts on the stasis changes. Yeah, it's uh, there. There's changes. <laughs> it's better. I think, yeah, I think I'm going to save my thoughts for part two whenever that comes out because from the outset, it's like okay, there, there's some quality of life stuff in here which are nice, like the the glacial uh, glacier. Uh, cooldown being reduced down, but then of course, like grenades themselves are, you know, the the whole discussion about the uh, the tiering system, uh, cold snap getting some co uh, quality of life stuff, the freeze bonus that's nice to have, but you know, I think, uh, yeah, part two is maybe what I'm going to be be kind of focused on. Um, anything that like gets a rework anything you know if we're getting a new keyword like right now we kind of have stasis overshield but not quite because that's your whisper of rhyme but um yeah frost armor would be nice um the tuning changes to rework uh, uh sorry tuning changes and reworks to existing fragments uh, and then the, the harvest aspect that was very interesting to know because like, at the moment uh, all three subclasses have a harvest aspect and that's what you get to spawn uh, stasis shards we do have a few I think it's just the scout rifle that can give stasis shards uh, it's the, the exotic weapon yeah, yeah wicked, wicked implement, implement. Um, I'm drawing a blank if we've got anything else 
Um, not not counting. Um, uh, I'm not counting the uh, the grade launcher. Uh, salvation's grip uh, for titans you can smash into those that that's part of your harvest aspect in the first place anyway but uh, as kind of i was looking for more of a okay we're, we're updating a few aspects here to give uh give you more opportunity to 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 spawn and then pick up stasis shards because i think the shards is what is kind of pulling the the, the subclass uh sorry the element down a little bit mm. just because you like you have to use one aspect um to, to, for that like to spawn kind yeah. of core loop yeah. thing yeah i hear you on that so i think if 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 i was to take away from uh anything from from what i've seen it's like there's some nice changes here but i th- i would have preferred to have seen uh like okay we're going to split out the, the 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 keyword of the stasis shards into more of a kind of availability uh for, for all the three classes not not just for one individual but we'll see uh part two um i you know to be honest i, I am a big stan of how stasis launched uh i know i'm going to get a lot of flack from <laughs> pvpers um i think it was excellent in pve there may have been some outliers in pvp but i don't care <laughs> <laughs> uh i was yeah again i'll save it for part two but like, real quick as a summary i think uh, going back to or near enough launch stasis mm. would have been my preferred okay this is what we're we're planning to do uh because you know we're in a very different sandbox compared to launch stasis you know two yeah we're coming up for three years now are we yeah um so that that's my thoughts that's my thought process we've got all, all our light subclasses have been upgraded we've got a brand new darkness subclass in the form of uh, strand i think uh, launch stasis would have been i think perfectly competitive uh, compared to all these these new sandbox changes but uh, yeah i'll i'll wait till uh, i'll wait till then <laughs> wow what a absolute beat down there. If you struggled against Stasis when it launched, Court is saying, get good. You are not good. <laughs> well, I was a shattered diver, so. Uh, I, think, all I think we sense. all were. No, we all were. Yeah, everyone was. Absolutely. Even the Titans and Warlocks are like, oh, I'm going to swap to my Hunter, rank up my Stasis <laughs> subclass in six weeks, get all my aspects. <laughs> yeah, I was too oh, busy wow. uh, moving it about to that awful grind. Yeah. 70 um, miles an hour with my Shiver Strike through the critical mess. <laughs> I, but, yeah, but I don't know, like, either way. It, genuinely, I think because we're in such a different su- uh, sandbox compared to back then, I would have loved to have seen them try out, okay, we're going to try out launch stasis again. Um, I, again, I'm not really thinking about PvP. This is a PvE uh, podcast after all. But in PvE, I think it was it was really, I felt like this is a proper subclass back then, but it has cl- had its cl- uh, wings clipped since then. Um, so part two, I'll wait for part two. <laughs> yeah, I'm I'm with you, Court. I fully expected everything that they outlined in the future stasis changes to be what we were getting with this mm, uh, yeah. bounce yeah. pass. Yep. <laughs> um so yeah. I'm I'm surprised, but at least they're aware of the things that I think a lot of us were expecting to come with this pass around. So I, I'm not I'm not mad about it. I'm just uh caught off guard, if you will. But yeah. Um I don't really have anything else unique to add. I uh, really do want to get some some terminology definitions, please. I think we can all understand what the uh, the bounce count means. But yeah, the, <laughs> the arming shape size is very, very vague. I think the, hmm. the title of this episode is probably going to be bounce count. <laughs> <laughs> Stomps. Bounce count go up. <laughs> episode 88, arming shape. <laughs> <laughs> what even is yeah but again i can't wait to at least have a reason to play with stasis again just because there are new or different behaviors attached to it now after the years where it's really just languished and yeah. um hopefully i'm assuming based on the artifact mods we will at least have a stasis surge in various playlist activities which will again be another excellent reason to bust out Stasis weapons, beyond a stasis subclass for that easy integration with my mods and stuff. So, 
very much looking forward to that. But yes, we do have exotic armor changes to get into. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And then <laughs> last and definitely not least, armor mod changes. So let's jump in. Uh, I'm going to actually pass you back to court here. What is we got a we got a preview for some of these, so I don't think we'll have too too much to add on to, but we did also get some additional information for other exotic armors. Court, what is being changed on the hunter side? Yeah, we, we talked about a few of these. I think hunters were they had the most amount of changes that we kind of saw a preview uh, during the mid season. So I'll quickly kind of uh, go through here. Uh, I'm gonna start off a little bit um kind of all over the place here in terms of how we're reading it from our script but stompies is uh, uh we know about it pvp is obviously the the place for stompies but uh, for over on the pve side they've added the functionality where you get dr we don't know how much versus combatants while airborne i made the point um back if you're not that familiar with a lot of kind of jump puzzles during encounters for dungeons and raids this may be for you um but yeah, nice to see a little PVE functionality added onto that. Uh, the Bombardiers is getting four, sorry, 40 slow stacks in PVE. Uh, you may be wondering, it's like it always had slow stacks. It never had slow stacks. It's uh, It had, weirdly, this, quote, slow, um, not stasis slow, slow. Mm. Uh, but they've added the slow functionality, the stasis slow, which is great. Um, the synergy that I was alluding to earlier on with Winter Shroud, which gives you 60 stacks of slow, and then the Bombardier's Bomb on Stasis when you dodge, you get 40. That is effectively an instant freeze. So 100 stacks of slow uh, plus, sorry, 60 plus 40 equals your 100 to get that freeze. And remember, slow doesn't decay like uh, Scorch. It doesn't wind back down from from say 60 down to zero uh, it's a timer base so you'll get uh, a few seconds to to kind of get that synergy so that'd be pretty good for overloads be good for unstoppables if you shatter that uh, frozen enemy as well uh, so a nice change there i'm going to really think about some stasis spells with bombardiers and winter shroud uh triton vice which is one of our kind of fairly new exotics the glaive melee damage while surrounded is now 100 percent it was 30 percent in pve so that's a nice change uh, that was one uh, i was kind of asking for triton vice to get if its whole gimmick is glaive melee while surrounded it should be you know at least double damage and we've got that uh all right so the sort of more interesting exotics that caught my eye we've got shards of galanor so it keeps its previous functionality which is the whole uh, using your blade barrage. Uh, so blade uh, blade barrage hits and kills refund super energy, and it caps out at fifty percent. Uh, and the refund amount is ba uh, depends on hits and kills as well as enemy rank. They're adding a functionality here. It's more of a passive benefit. Where throwing knife kills any throwing knife now grant super energy re ranging between plus 2.5 percent and 5 percent and that value depends on the type of enemy killed so that's a very good change to put that in perspective so start your scales uh each orb of power grants an additional two percent super energy uh for for orbs that you spawn uh originally let me have a look here i have to look at the compendium uh, the the value is, it kind of varies a little bit, but uh, I, oh, I thought I had the the value here. Um, it it tends to be around about one percent, one point two five percent. There's a lot of kind of we'll talk about fire fire power shortly as well, but there's a few uh, kind of variations between orb generation. So two point five percent up to five percent is quite substantial you know five percent of your super bar if you keep getting that you know that's probably going to be like a champion or or even a boss type enemy but uh, that's a fair chunk for throwing knife kills and considering with solar hunter you can do that whole synergy loop with uh you know your dodge or if you're using uh knock them down if you get that kill you'll get that uh that uh knife refunded We've got a bunch of throwing knives as well that have got a bunch of synergy. We talked about it in a previous previous episode, but Shards is looking pretty strong. Another one that's looking pretty strong here is Aphidious Spath, 
which again, it keeps its previous effects, which are as a little kind of uh, uh, reminder here, uh, we have, uh, so it grants an extra melee charge to your solar subclass and all melee charges are recharged simultaneously. So uh, you can expend both of them when you uh, uh, dodge with your gamblers dodge or if you, you just wait, uh, wait for the, the, the cooldown to get up to 100%, you'll get both of your, your charges back. Uh, it also has some interaction with knock him down aspect while radiant where knife kills restore one charge and knife trick precision kills and direct ignition kills in which the knife trick apply scorch retort, uh, restores two. So on top of the pre-existing changes, it's also getting a functionality added here where knife kills now grant a stacking damage bonus uh, of at times one it's 30 times two it's 60 and times three it's 100 so that's double damage for five seconds and dodging refreshes that duration so i if you're into throwing your knives out this is your exotic for you this is a very interesting change here i mean i think if hideous spath went from like maybe c tier to potentially S tier if you're really <laughs> into your knives. Uh, we've got Mechaneer's Trick Sleeves, which we talked about a few weeks back. Again, it keeps its previous effects with the whole sidearm stuff. Uh, sidearm, uh, they've added the functionality where sidearm damage bonus now persists for five seconds after your shields begin to recharge and sidearm kills extend the, the damage bonuses uh, dur duration by three seconds and completely reloads your sidearms magazine. Next season, anti-barrier sidearm forerunner. I'm going to be using this in our uh, in our GM runs. <laughs> um, very cool change. Very nice. Uh, I I really I I like th that they're really focusing on. Uh, you know this this is the sidearm exotic. Mm -hmm. So here's a bunch of bonuses. Plus you get uh, a damage bonus. Plus it reloads your sidearm. If you're big into mm -hmm. sidearms, this is for you. Uh, and finally. Uh, much to kind of a similar uh, kind of vein here, uh, like shards and Aphidia Spath here. We've got Celestial Nighthawk, which it keeps its previous effects, where if you uh, perform a kill, you get 33% of your super back. And they've added a functionality where weapon precision kills now grant super energy ranging between 1.5% up to 4.5%. So again, like shards, this is quite a substantial buff. And because it's not it's not uh, attached to your knives, it's just any precision kills. This is probably going to be a very like superb exotic in you know your mm -hmm. lower kind of middling end content. But even in in GMs, like if you're just performing precision kills all the time, you get your celestial nighthawk up all the time. Good for you. Like I think they've done a really good job uh, the, for hunters with the amount of changes here. Some really great like passive effects. I think we were all kind of asking for a lot of uh, exotic armor to get some sort of passive effect. So, uh, hunters, I think you're going to be uh, eaten strong, especially on solar subclass. <laughs> um, I think just on a like we talked about this just before we started recording, but I think Celestial Nighthawk might benefit from maybe just a slight uh, like addition. Uh, I kind of suggested like a. It would get some sort of anti barrier synergy if you, uh, you know, if you popped your golden gun, but when a, a champion, a barrier champion popped its shield, you can't use your golden gun against uh, uh, against the uh, the champion. So if it had some sort of synergy with that, then I think that would be a nice kind of quality of life. You know, it's it it turns your golden gun into one omega, like huge. 600% damage shot and it can't pierce a buyer champion like come on like that's a bit silly <laughs> uh but uh, anyway yeah fantastic changes here love to see it uh i know titans got some uh, they got a very interesting rework with uh, one of them but uh, i'll pass you back to saint who'll uh, give us the scoop yeah there there's a couple that we kind of knew that were coming and i'll, I'll start off with like synthesis this is previewed a little bit leaked by Bungie basically themselves into the game. We have a little bit more details on that though. So the part that we already knew was removed extended melee lunge range distance and added improved weapon handling and reload speed while surrounded. So kind of getting this weird like threat detector surrounded hybrid perk in there instead of the melee 
one sh- distance, which I'm totally fine with. I think that'll be great. Just more reason for me to be swapping my shotgun from Threat Detector over to Pugilist. Some of the details on its other changes, the Glaive Melee, the Glaive Melee bonus damage is going from 50% all the way up to 100%, which is, I don't think that's quite all the way back to where it was at the start, but it's still going to be very effective, twice as effective as it has been in recent seasons. And then on the regular damage side, or the more general one, reduce PVE surrounded melee damage bonus to 165% from 200%. So still really strong. Um, this is another hit to the Banner of War melee build, just because that's it's it's reliant on this. Um, but it's still going to be incredibly strong, and now Glaives are going to be a little bit better. Losing the melee lunge gets a little bit of handling and reload, so um, kind of a mixed bag. I think Synthesef's come out pretty even from this, even though there is a 35% decrease from that 200 and 165. Still going to be really strong, maybe just not quite doing as... a seen you know high amounts of damage as it was in some previous cases speaking of melee exotics we got a total rework to worm god caress i i i don't know if this is what you're referencing Corp, but i think this is the most interesting one um worm god caress now has a meter that increases with melee kills and finishers and decays over time the meter is broken up into five sections, which provide escalating melee and glaive melee damage bonuses. The upper end of the meter also provides escalating weapon damage bonuses. As the meter decays, it will pass back through the earlier tiers rather than deactivating all at once immediately. The meter decays faster, the more full it is. It, this is the one I was alluding to, yeah. Yeah, man, we don't really have anything i don't i don't think that works quite like this especially the way that it says it gives a little bit of uh weapon bonus at the at the further tiers um i mean i have an idea of what this is going to be like but definitely really interesting especially with the glaive melee damage bonus how is that going to compare i'd have to imagine that at the high end it goes higher than syntheseps because syntheseps is so much easier to activate and get to to its um you know it's just on or off versus worm god you kind of have to keep stacking up um, really interested to spend some time with this early on next season and, and to see how that goes with the, with the glaive and, and to feel that out a little bit. We got a buff and a nerf to Paragon Greaves. We'll just keep it on the melee train here. You now have to be airborne for a brief period of time before the exotic effects will apply, which is kind of, I feel like a very old functionality that's being brought back and then added functionality Damaging champions, tormentors, or mini bosses with any shoulder charge ability deals further increased damage and will refund melee energy if you use it on one of these combatants. So, exactly how much melee energy is getting, you know, uh, refunded on that and how much of an increase we're talking about here, they they failed to mention, um, which is funny to me because, like, Syntheseps gets exact percentage numbers, and then Peregrine Greaves and Worm Gods uh, don't get any specific details, which I, I wish they would just put that in there. But nevertheless, we'll we'll definitely be uh, talking more about that after those changes come out and looking at some research from the Destiny Science community. I'll, I'll be all over those forums in the early weeks of the season. Severance Enclosure is getting a little bit of a buff. Increase the size and damage of the explosion, and kills with the explosion will now trigger an additional additional explosion not quite clear if that will just continue chaining um but now the your finisher and powered melee kills will be rocking a slightly larger and slightly more deadly explosion and then those can chain at least one time which will be very interesting something i'd use something i used with uh flesh of storm after her, I saw Bryce using it one time because these enemies were like <laughs> flying into the air, and I was like, "What the hell is going on over here?" Uh, still remains to be seen if that's going to be effective, but will be funny for sure. The last two are interesting. I'm, I'm not sure. I, one of them is definitely a buff. Uh, one of them is a buff, but I'm not sure how it's going to land. Ashen Wake is keeping its previous effect of its fireball fusion grenade. Added functionality, fusion grenade impacts now stun unstoppable champions. 
Hmm. Uh, Ashen Wake is typically something that is used to clear out smaller groups of enemies with like roaring flames on your solar subclass where you can get that grenade energy back based off of the tier of the enemy that you killed. You're getting increasing uh, grenade damage. This kind of takes it another direction where using your grenade to stun a champion, uh, you can now use your grenade to stun a champion. It is very cool to see Titans getting more, um, you know, exotic intrinsic champion stuns, champion counters. I'm I'm totally all for that. Um, the only thing I wish they included here is something like Peregrine Greaves, where if you use it to stun a champion, you would still get some of that energy back like you would if you had killed um, a low-tier enemy, a mid-tier enemy. Um, kind of seems like you you are now going to have the ability to take it one way and to clear out enemies by just throwing fireballs, or you can use it as a utility. Um, but those two don't really seem to be connected to each other. So I wish we could just have a little bit something there to kind of connect those two together, but still a good change. And finally, Precious Scars. Added functionality. Kills with weapons matching your subclass now apply Restoration times 1 for 3 seconds. This is really nice because this is applying to your teammates uh, as well as you that I think they're within about 12 to 15. 15 meters i i can't remember exactly what that is but i remember it's a pretty good radius um and now this is 15 like, meters 15. is what it is yeah man that's really big especially if you're in a gm you're most likely going to be within that distance of your teammates or honestly just in most pve activities you're probably going to be within that distance of at least one to two teammates um really mm -hmm. i feel like solidifying its position as a strong support exotic and it is subclass agnostic, which is the most interesting part about it. Okay, uh, a lot of Titan changes, some really good ones, some nerfs to kind of, you know, even things out. And some ones, I, I, you know, I'm not sure how they're going to land, but definitely really excited to try out like Severance Enclosure, uh, you know, Peregrine Greaves, Worm Gods. I, I'll be taking all these for a spin, honestly, within the first week or so of the new season. Um, doesn't end there, though. We got a, a we got another big slew of changes for Warlocks. Ibitus, what's going on with the Warlocks? Well, Bungie uh, insists on trying to make Balador's Wrath the Reavers a thing. I can't even pronounce the title of this stupid armor. Uh, <laughs> it is keeping its previous effects. If you don't know what those are, it's okay. That's 100% shatter damage with the super heavy attack on Stasis. It is now getting additional functionality when you cast a Frost Pulse Rift. Nearby allies gain a tier 2 stasis surge weapon bonus for 10 seconds in PvE. That's a 17% weapon damage increase, and a 50 HP overshield. They've also changed some functionality. The stasis damage bonus provided to allies by the Winter's Wrath Shockwave is now a tier 4 stasis surge weapon bonus that is going all the way up to 25%. And the stasis warlock in question also gains the tier 4 stasis surge when their super ends. Previously, this was a 15% damage increase, which could be stacked with everything. Again... I still don't think I could ever recommend this for the simple reason that there's a million other things Warlocks should be doing in any situation where uh, you want your teammates to be dealing more damage, notably well with, uh, goodness sakes, so many different exotics. So, um, yeah, this is cool, but not going to be applicable in a raid or a dungeon environment. I guess if you want to get silly during a GM or if you want to do a silly raid night with the boys, you know, slap on the Balador's Wrath Reavers, let them know that you're serious about business and go to town with your stasis surge weapon bonuses. But yeah, not really feeling the changes, but they're still addressing it, which I like to see. Uh, another one we got, Apotheothis Veil keeping its previous effects and also gaining these functionalities. Casting your super now grants cure times three. That is 180 HP for you and nearby allies. And on top of all of that, when your super ends, you temporarily gain greatly increased melee and grenade regen for eight seconds. Again, a very odd niche exotic. I'm sure this is going to be great. Uh, this is, of course, subclass agnostic as well. So the cure times three will be very beneficial. Um, maybe if you're going into like a final stand situation, uh, you got a well and you need to plant it to get ready to, to really push that boss, that raid boss over the edge. Very helpful in that situation. Uh, or maybe a dungeon boss in like a master difficulty level. But um, I'm just not sure over the other options that Warlocks have how, how much this change is going to increase Veil's 
um, attraction functionality, but it's still a neat thing and it is definitely doing a lot more than it used to do. So I'll take it. Felwinter's Helm, keeping its previous effects as well. They've also tweaked uh, the weaken effects here. So they've moved the size of the weakening burst and the duration of that weaken up one tier against all targets. So on minor tier enemies, the powered melee has a 10 second duration and a 15 meter radius. A finisher against a miner has a 15 second duration and a 15 meter radius. I'm not going to talk about what it used to be, but these are increases here. The Elite's Powered Melee is a 15 second duration, 20 meter radius. Finisher being a 20 second duration, 20 meter radius. Again, it's going to follow that same formula here until we get to bosses. But for many bosses and champion, 20 second duration, 25 meter radius. 20 second duration, 25 meter radius. Bosses getting that 20 second duration and 25 meter radius for Powered Melees. And then Finishers, this would only apply to boss type Lucent Hive. 20 second duration and a 25 meter radius that part is unchanged again i think this is still a very niche exotic um the weekend is nice for sure but i don't know if this is going to suddenly bump it up into a, a must use or must consider tier of exotic armor that warlocks have access to the final one that we have though is definitely getting bumped up into the a potentially s tier karnstein armlets getting a heck of a glow up here melee kills now grant cure times three that's 180 hp and restoration times one which is 35 health points per second for eight seconds finishers granting additionally that cure times three and restoration times two which is now going to be 50 hp per second for eight seconds the We Have Banner of War at Home for the Flu Flocks <laughs> has finally arrived. Uh, I'm very excited. I, I'm probably only going to be playing with Karnstein Armlets next season. I don't, I'm not really thrilled about the other three changes here, but this one seems really fun. Again, we don't have a lot of melee fantasies in PvE for Warlocks, so I definitely want to play in that play space on my preferred class here. Although there is another there is another change that all three of us will get an opportunity to uh, to try out here. The Aeon Gauntlets are getting yet another, uh, what do we even want to call this? This is like a, a rework, I guess, a pretty substantial one for the three sects here. Again, Aeon Gauntlets have three mods that you can swap between Sect of Force, Sect of Insight, and Sect of Vigor. All three are getting pretty big changes here. Uh, Court, I'm going to pass it back to you here for a breakdown of this. What is happening to the Aeon Gauntlets? Yeah, so I'll I'll uh, kind of preface this with this is another tab that I have on my spreadsheet, which we'll link in the uh, the show notes. Uh, it's on my um, uh, spreadsheet, just called Aeon uh, Gauntlets or something like that. Um, what have I named? Oh, Aeon Sex. Um, yeah. So this. Is just a kind of visualization of what each uh, mod does for the Aeon user and then for the fire team members that are not wearing Aeon gauntlets and then for the fire team uh, members that are using uh, the uh, Aeon gauntlets but not using the same sect mod. Uh, so, what's changing here uh, is that uh, over on Sector Force, which is the red one? It's coloured red when you when you equipped this mod. They've removed the the no longer uh, granting bonus melee uh, grenades and super energy on stunning a champion or defeating a boss or mini boss. And for the Aeon user, at rapid precision hits provide a quicker reload and weapon swap speeds. Uh, and the bonus now lasts for 10 seconds, and that's up from 6 seconds. Uh, stunning a champion or rapid precision hits against elites, champions, or mini bosses will mark them for your allies. Uh, Fireteam allies will gain a 20% uh, damage buff to mark targets. Not entirely sure what type of damage buff this is, if it's just going to be like a, like a pseudo-weaken, if it's going to be applicable to abilities, weapons, all that jazz, if it's just going to be a regular... Uh, empowering buff we're not entirely sure what that is but it's 20 percent uh, and for aeon cult allies when a target is first marked nearby aeon cult allies who do not have the sect of force role uh, mod equipped gain grenade and melee energy again we don't have the stats for that for the blue one that's sect of insight they've uh, just done a small tweak here because it's pretty you know established that's the one where if you finish a champion you spawn a purple brick if you uh, finish an elite 
type of enemy, you get a special brick. Uh, so for Aeon cult allies nearby uh, who do not have this sect role equipped, uh, no, longer, no longer gain a bonus to weapon damage for a short time. Instead, they gain a burst of super energy. So they've moved the sect of the original sect of force mod from uh, from uh, from that one and put it into this one. Uh, done a little kind of. Uh, swap between the damage buff with this uh, the super energy uh, that used to be an impairing buff it was one of our quite potent ones it was 20 uh, sorry 35 percent and it lasted for like 20 seconds i want to say mm-hmm. um again it's quite niche uh, compared to uh, our kind of other bonuses uh, let me just double check that i think it was 35 percent i've made an info yeah it was yeah um so that that's now been removed from Sect of Insight, but it still keeps the whole finishing champions and all that. The, you get uh, uh, bricks for for your weapons, uh, and finally Sect of Vigor, which is your green one uh, for the Aeon user. It now provides the damage resistance against combatants when an ally dies or is resurrected, in addition to its existing class ability energy, uh, which is. Um, uh, 25% class ability on ally death uh, and a 100% class ability on ally revival. Uh, and we're not entirely sure what the DR percentage will be uh, when your ally dies or is revived. And this is against PvE bands. For fire team allies, when an Aeon user casts their super, nearby allies no longer gain an instant burst of healing or an overshield. They will instead... Uh, uh, instead grants critically wounded allies uh, damage resistance from combatants as long as they stay near you. So this is going to be more of a kind of uh, very support orientated uh, uh, sect here. Uh, it's all about damage resistance. Uh, again, we don't have the, the percentage value for that. Uh, and finally, Aeon Cult allies nearby. Aeon Cult allies who do not have set to vigor mod equipped will also recover class ability energy more quickly. Again, don't have stats for that. If you want to see a visualization, I think it's much easier to kind of understand it within a table rather than trying to read it out loud. There's a lot of kind of overlapping things. You've got three different types of mods that do three different types of effects. So I think it's easier just to see it from a a visualization. So you can see that over on my spreadsheet. Um, uh, You guys got any thoughts for these? I mean, it's certainly more... There's definitely an actual value proposition for doing a trio of of Aeon, you know, gauntlets, so to say. So, uh, yeah, I mean, I'm moderately interested. I'll definitely give it a try at least, especially the the marking one. Depending on how that combatant's marking system works, I'm, I'm very keen on that. Sounds to me like we need to do a GM with the class glaives and the Aeon ah, gauntlets, it's all each with together. the different sect mods, so we can really... <laughs> Do something. Uh, I'm not quite sure what it's going to be, but you know, we, we gotta we gotta try this out. Cult of the glaive, huh? Hmm. Okay. <laughs> all right. I think when you do combine all three, is where it it it's supposed to be. That's your your big power fantasy. Um, mm-hmm. Obviously, sect of insight we've used many times. We've recommended <laughs> it as well for you know dungeons raids, uh, GMs as well. Specifically the finishing a champion or a mini boss gives you that heavy ammo brick but the rest i think yeah i think it it you'd uh, you'd get a lot more benefits if everyone's using a different type of sect if you're your red and your blue and your your green ones here very interesting changes though mm-hmm. again i wasn't expecting this but it, it seems like they really do want to lean into that fantasy and these are exotics that have famously not had much of a reason until that first rework where we did get that very cool finisher uh, mechanic added into the sect of insight mod so i'm i'm again happy that at least the changes are coming around here and i do want to give them a fair a fair shake because if it works out i think that'll be a really fun fantasy for you know three person content gm dungeons stuff like that but mm. yeah happy for it yeah all right know what i'm not happy about yeah <laughs> yeah you go ahead there Evitus. you take it away all you have. oh man <laughs> Last section here, uh, armor mod changes. Again, most of these were overhauled with the launch of Lightfall, so I'm not too surprised that we did get in our final season of the year of Lightfall a little bit of tweaks to the system, but 
there there was a lot pretty much everything major got hit here uh and not in the way that we wanted so heavy-handed firepower and reaper mods now have a 10 second cooldown for generating an orb of power the reaper mod specifically requires a kill to be secured within 10 seconds of using your class ability the kickstart mods melee grenade and utility now provide between 16 percent and 45 percent ability energy depending on your armor charge and they now also require at least a single armor charge be consumed, so there's no more of that free zero stack benefit here. Momentum transfer, bolstering detonation, impact induction, and focusing strike. Uh, got some changes now, but for impact induction and focusing strike specifically, they do require a melee powered melee damage hit to activate their effects. All of those mods now provide 12%. 17%, 20% for the number of mods uh, equipped respectively, that being 1, 2, and 3. As a reminder of what these mods do, Impact Induction means a Powered Melee Damage Hit grants Grenade Ability Energy. There's a 7 second cooldown on this. Focusing Strike, where a Powered Melee Damage Hit grants Class Ability Energy, also on a 7 second cooldown. Momentum Transfer is where Grenade Damage Hit grants a Melee Ability Energy. Bolstering Detonation is where Grenade Damage Hit grants Class Ability Energy. All those on 7 second cooldowns. The Outreach, Bomber, and Distribution mods. Outreach, the class ability usage granting melee energy, has now been tweaked to grant 12%, 17%, and 20% for 1, 2, and 3 copies of those mods. Bomber, which is where your class ability usage grants grenade energy, also been tweaked to 12, 17, 20% for 1, 2, or 3 copies. Distribution, where class ability usage grants grenade, melee, class, and super, has been tweaked to 4%, 6%, and 7% for 1, 2, and 3 copies of those mods. Energy provided is further reduced based on the cooldown of the class ability used, with the shortest cooldowns having the highest reduction up to 60%. Oh boy, Oof. this is probably what you've heard about if you are on any Destiny-related social media. The armor mod changes have certainly thrown a wrench in a lot of builds. What are we feeling, folks? I my, The kind of joke that I was throwing around opening up at the beginning of uh, the session here before we started recording was... Bungie's taking a look at Quartz post game carnage report screens from the, the GMs, <laughs> and uh, they just knew something had to be done because my man is generating 167 orbs uh, per activity. But I mean, the the orbs one I was really not surprised by. Uh, like jokes aside, I, I mean, we were making so many orbs so easily; it's ridiculous. The General subclass ones, I'm a little bit more surprised by. It's just blanket nerfs targeting the building aspect rather than the ability cooldowns, which is funny because we're also getting some cooldown adjustments. And I I can understand why they would do it for targeting the build crafting, but the my kind of counterpoint to that was it makes build crafting feel less valuable um, when the impacts aren't as high versus just changing the cooldowns of the abilities outright and retaining uh, the potency of the builds themselves is, is kind of my general gist. Um, so, yeah, I get it. I wish that it would have been targeted to just at specific abilities more than build crafting in general, but uh, it's what it is. Uh, Court, where are you at? Um, Yeah, I, I saw the the R or power generation from like week one of Lightfall. Uh, we talked about it back then. I was talking about the grapple melee. Uh, you combine it with heavy handed and firepower, you'd spawn two orbs, you get Reaper in there to like, you know, spawn in another. It was, you know, a lot of orbs were being spawned. They did tweak with that uh, in season 21. Um, I kind of called back then that they'd probably add a cooldown to how many times you could proc heavy handed and firepower because mm -hmm. on arc hunter when combination blow is being used you can just keep spawning orbs and that's what i did in my solo ghosts of the deep run i just kept you know combination blow liars handshake 
and just keep cycling it and you just keep spawning over power that's no longer the case you you know 10 seconds isn't too long in the grand scheme of things but I, I i'm not that fussed about it but the other three yeah it's a bit of a sting on top of the the base cooldowns getting normalized across the board for uh, all our 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 class uh, abilities uh, grenades and melees I think I feel like they should have went the other way where they increased the cost of these mods rather than, mm. you know, kind of dumpstering their stats. Uh, because to your point, Saint, about, you know, I think it's it's just caused more of a, like, this isn't quite indicative to the whole build crafting um, kind of uh, vibe than, mm -hmm. than if they just increased the costs. So a bit of a sting and then of course like i would be okay with outreach bomber distribution having you know kind of normal because before they worked based on uh so warlocks would have a they would have the energy gain uh, at, at say uh, one times uh, there would be no reduction titans would get i can't remember how much it was but it was they'd get like 20 percent less gain uh, and then hunters would have the most uh like reduction because you know it's based on how many uh, uh based on the class abilities cooldown you know hunters can dodge more often compared to titans can place a barricade compared to warlocks can place uh, uh a rift that's why it was it was tiered like that way but now they've tiered it a little bit differently they've followed the same kind of base cooldown that we we talked about at the start of the episode uh, it's a little bit inverse though it's if your your uh class ability is charged faster you're going to get more um uh, more of a reduction so again hunters are are kind of hit hard here uh as expected you know hunters can dodge really fast you know marksman's dodge is at base cooldown at tier three is 29 seconds so if you can uh, you know combine outreach bomber distribution uh, you could theoretically get it up uh, a lot more often compared to titans and warlocks and that's fine but i think just because it's like a double stinger of outreach bomber distribution plus class abilities in general are also getting tweaked when combined with uh, those abilities that give you your your chunk energy uh, so perhaps you know it maybe it's 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 going to breathe a little bit room towards you know acrobats dodge isn't going to have uh, a huge reduction because it's a longer cooldown same with empowering and healing rifts as natural uh, and same with like bastion Tower, towering barricade where that's like that's your highest uh sorry your your longest cooldown so they're not going to get uh, as much of a reduction um but i don't know i think it's this double stinger which is kind of arcing me a little bit i, I would have preferred if they they went down the route of just making mods a little bit more expensive if that's what their kind of concern was but uh We'll see how it performs in practice. Uh, out of all the changes here, I've been fairly kind of constructive. I've been like, okay, these these are great changes. The, the exotic reworks have been really great. Yeah, there's some that are like, uh, they could use with a little bit more kind of buzz. But it's this last section was a bit of a kicker, which I, I can feel it. Uh, I can feel the, the sentiment. And I think the three of us are kind of a bit miffed uh, when it comes to this um, impetus. I am assuming that heavy-handed firepower and reaper are now going to show up as line items in my UI once they have spawned an orb of power, given that's how all the fragments that are related to orbs of power also do show up, letting me know ah, when the 10-second right. cooldown yeah. is up, and I am not happy about that. I mm. I understand the change, but come on, we, we are jam-packed in our UI as enough as it is i would have rather waited until we did get some mm. sort of tweak to the ui for this change to come i would have celebrated it then again not i don't have a problem with the change but un again it's one more thing that i will potentially have to keep track of in the back of my head when it gets pushed out by you know three other things that are also on cooldowns or, or have procced and the game's letting me know that i can activate them and i don't care for that it's driving me crazy it's my biggest complaint right now Please fix the UI. I understand that ability stuff is is putting pressure on 
are activity designers, but this is the very, very last thing that we need is yet another cooldown to appear on my screen or not appear on my screen and still be in cooldown. And I'm, you know, have to keep track of that in my own head. Mm. Well, you guys... Everything else is fine. <laughs> yeah. So I was going to ask both of you, Would so looking at heavy-handed firepower and reaper and also the kickstart mods, would you guys still be using them uh, part of your builds? Because I know some of your builds... They, they do kind of spec into those pretty pretty substantially. I've got nothing else to put in there. So, hmm. yeah, for the most part. Um, especially heavy-handed firepower. Like, I've got to look at my arms. What do I even have in there? You know, fastball for, for the grenades that don't have it intrinsically. Of course, there are a few Warlock uh, arm pieces, the exotic armor, that do actually provide fastball intrinsically. So then I just take it off. I'm trying to think of, like, what else I could even put in there. Because the reason I'm asking is because, you know, we've got quite a lot of things that give us orbs of power nowadays. You know, siphon mods mm -hmm. haven't been touched with this, but because heavy handed firepower and reaper were printed pretty, you know, central or they were they were part of your your loops to gain armor charge stacks, that's no longer mm -hmm. the case. I think now there's going to be a little bit more focus on uh, the mods that now grant you double armor charge or triple armor charges. That's kind of what I'm getting at here. Oh, I see. Yeah, I... I, I mean, I'm definitely going to use, but it's probably going to go much more to single copies because the returns are so diminishing. Mm. Um just not super interested in running anything more than that and also yeah it is kind of a double-sided or or you know two sides both being hammered at once heavy-handed now has a two a 10 second cooldown well my hammer you know was what was proccing that the most often anyways and that's also getting a second and a half pickup you know cooldown nerf and so is the ability to generate an orbs is getting a 10 second cooldown nerf so it's going to go way down um I don't know. Tough. So you're you're wondering about something like shield break charge in the arms court? Like, will I now have space or to stacks go? on stacks kind of a thing? Perhaps, yeah. But yeah, I was thinking more like stacks on stacks or even uh, time dilation, which just increases the 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 decay of your armor charge stack. Mm -hmm. um, because that, like a lot of my builds were based on the the firepower or heavy handed. I punch, get those orbs, and then I'm set up. Now it's going to require a little bit more build crafting as pair. You know, that's these changes. That's the whole point of these changes. Uh, mm -hmm. Again, I'm not that, I'm not happy about it, but I think it's again, it's another kind of uh, the way Bungie are, are presenting this is. Yeah, we, there's a lot of nerfs here, but also, you know, it gives maybe a little bit more breathing room too, like, you know, shield charge break uh, to, you know, stacks and start, stacks, uh, time dilation. Th those ones are kind of, are, mm. are, are not really often used. Uh, charged up where you're, uh, you know, you can combine that with your um, stacks and stacks, uh, giving you more armor charges uh, a net gain of armor charges uh, compared to just using your three, you can go up to six. But again, it, it, that that was to my point as to like some of these changes are a stinger because I would have just have rather have seen them increase the the energy slot cost if that's what their kind of concern was here, or mm. like just do a balance of the energy costs for all of the armor mods. But uh, maybe we'll see that in the future. Um, but yeah. I can tell you I'm not using charged up because I need that space for my resistance yeah. mods. Mm. And even if I didn't need space for the resistance mods, I'd rather go with the reserve mods. Yep. So um, that's just a factor of it being in the chest slot. I think for arms here, I got to look and see which ones are on which armor pieces. Shield break charge. Yeah. Um, I'll, I'll probably be considering that for, for PVE. No, no promises, but I'm definitely looking at it. Oh, Oh, but you got the loaders also in that slot. I don't know. And it, that, there that, is a lot of competition. That <laughs> um, shield break yeah. charge is four energy, which is, I mean, yeah. it's quite a lot. Uh, you know, matching damage to that combatant shield, like your solar weapon to that sh solar shield. And we have a lot of, you know, enemies that have shields now, but uh, it's very particular. I like, 
it's maybe maybe something we can talk about in the new year just kind of looking at the mods overall i think we've kind of reached the point where maybe we'll get one or two mods in the future but this is this is our collection now and we could kind of evaluate like what's really the potency factor here plus you know all these changes that we're getting next season um that 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 the reason why i was asking was because of like it is a, a, a I was going to say indirect, but it is a very direct hit to those builds that I do have that utilized heavy handed or firepower. You'd pick up those orbs and you'd have your melee or grenade kick start and then you just repeat that loop. But that's no more really it, it. You can still do it, but those cooldowns are now, you know, your, your big blockage. Hmm. The, yeah, I, I understand why some of this needed to be brought down, but I think for me, this feels a little bit in conflict with the core fantasy of Strand, which when it was pitched to us, they kept using this one phrase over and over again, the actions per minute of being yep. able to chain stuff. Like At a certain point, if you're going to commit to that being just a, a Strand unique thing, you can't just simply give us three different charges to our melees or an extra grenade charge you do need to make it so that we can loop these things. And obviously, from a gameplay point of view, the abilities team did need to put the kibosh on some of this. But I do wonder what... Again, they're working on this stuff so so far uh, in advance. But like, how, how do you think in a testing environment this is going to play out for Strand, which is so heavily dependent on looping things, especially... Um, melees into or, or grapples into a melee or or a class item, some other kind of class item into a melee. Um, how, how do you see that playing out? You know, this is me talking to Bungie here because I'm not, I'm I'm a little nervous, you know, and I'm not even somebody that has something crazy like Banner of War on my subclass, right? I've got really threadlings to just generate, which is a pretty straightforward thing to do the way that it's that gameplay loop is set up for Warlocks, but. If you if you really want to create a fantasy that's built around taking a lot of charged actions, then we got to make sure that we're getting energy back for those actions to be charged. Because once they stop being charged, they really do drop off in the end game unless you have something like a weapon perk or an exotic armor perk really stepping in to kind of fill that spot while you're waiting for the uncharged ability to become charged. So again, I, I'm not against these changes. I realize that we did probably need for all abilities, the action usage to come down a little bit, but not all of the elements are designed with the same mindset, right? And Strand was very much pitched to us as a high ability uptime option so i am a little bit nervous to see how that's going to fare mm. in the mm. end game next season <laughs> we've got a new gm that we know about is coming um how that's going to work if assuming that we're going to have another um strand overcharge or strand surge excuse me activity modifier for something like gms but even if i want to use it in the new dungeon that's coming out how how is that going to work exactly um mm. Because I don't want Strand... I mean, nobody wants Strand to turn into another stasis. <laughs> yeah. The the last thing I wanted to bring up, um, it actually links back to when I was talking about Shards of Galanor and Slash of Nighthawk, mm -hmm. is the, the super gains that you get from them. So uh, I mentioned for Shards, 2.5% uh, up to 5%. Uh, I've found the source of orb, Orbs of Power. I'm using that as a comparison. So 2.5% um, gain is the same amount you'd get from a siphon orb uh, or mm. a subclass specific fragment orb. Uh, and up to 5%, that's, there isn't really anything that goes uh, or is at 5%. But think of uh, when you've got three siphon mods or it's a power uh, preservation uh, orb, it's 4.4%. Uh, so just putting that in perspective. But the reason I brought that up is because I'm looking at Reaper, Firepower, and Heavy Handy times one. You get 0.8% super energy on orb pickup. So, like, this 10-second cooldown is is maybe, like, 8 point, uh, sorry, 0.8% wasn't a lot in the first place. Uh, looking at Firepower, Firepower times two, heavy handy times two, it was 1.1, and then times three mods, it was 1.25%. So again, it's still right. not a lot, but 
it's maybe why they've they've tweaked with that cooldown in the first place. Um, but even even at that, like a Reaper orb of power at zero point eight percent, and now it's got a ten second cooldown. It's like, well, I might as well just use shards of Galanor or or Slash the Nighthawk, and then maybe that's that was the whole whole point. <laughs> like they've looked at these exotic uh, armor effects and thought, okay, we're adding some passive stuff, but we need to bring something else down to let those rise. And it's like, okay, fine, but yeah, I, yeah, this this these changes are just a little bit of a stinger. Yeah, well, um, kind of a mixed bag in our in mm. our sandbox changes here today. You know, tough note to end on. Some exciting stuff, some good stuff, some stasis, some stasis stuff. Uh, I'm much really, needed stasis stuff. Yeah, I'm I'm hoping that the what we read, you know, from our like stasis changes section plus some of the artifact mods will be enough to make it viable in the new season with something like Hail the Storm. Um, but it's got to compete with the, you know, while radiant solar precision final blows cause combatants to ignite. And that's a, that's a, that's a tall order, man. Um, with the <laughs> big explosion there. Props yeah. more, you know, props more of those good brain juices than, uh, yeah. than, you know, just watching a stasis crystal form around an enemy. <laughs> yeah, Bunchy, what about my good brain juices? Come on, man. <laughs> I will say as well, like the so, like we've only got anti barrier sidearm, but also I think I don't know if folks even realize, but radiant is part of the barrier like counter yep. system, and we've got plenty of those it, even in the base game. But we've got you know two or three in this uh, artifact. Yeah, what was uh, it? Uh, was... Rapid solar precision hits or rapid solar kills, right? Yeah, yeah. Season of the solar subclasses with a pinch of stasis. That will be <laughs> what we have to look forward to. Actually, what you will have to look forward to as you're listening to this episode. So we are we are less than a week away from the final season of Destiny. But until then, thank you so much for listening to episode 88 of Podcast Versus Enemies. We do also want to thank our audio engineer, Autodidactos, as always, for his work behind the scenes. Season of the Wish, season of the Ahamkara, it's coming. There will probably be a trailer dropping uh, probably the day that this episode comes out. Looking forward to that. Of course, looking forward to the season itself. In the meantime, my name is Impetus. You can find me by that name in Destiny and in Discord, specifically in the Massive Breakdown server, talking about all sorts of PvE activities. Court, where can our listeners find you? You can find me over on various social media websites as Court Projects. Same on Discord. You can find my spreadsheets and infographics over on the Destiny spreadsheet link tree or the Destiny Massive Breakdowns website, along with many other applications and spreadsheets to enhance your Destiny experience. Saint, where can we find you? My name is Saint Beer. You can find me by that name, social media, or in that massive breakdowns discord server asking for even more ashen wake buffs until then thanks for listening to another episode of pve <laughs>